أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسم صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسالونك عن الانفال قل الانفال لله والرسول فاتقوا الله واصلحوا ذات بينكم واطيعوا الله ورسوله ان كنتم مؤمنين انما المؤمنون الذين اذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم واذا تليت عليهم اياته زادتهم ايمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون الذين يقيمون الصلاه ومما رزقناهم ينفقون اولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفره ورزق كريم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم ربنا انس وحشتنا في قبورنا وارحمنا بالقران العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته انا الليل وانا النهار واجعله لنا حجه يا رب العالمين امين <تصفيق> Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh In the name of Allah and by his grace and blessings we are start, we are starting the study of surah al-anfal today We are actually in the middle of the second group of Makki Madani surahs As you must recall that I have told you that just like seven ahzab or seven manazil seven parts of the quran divided nearly equally so as to enable a person to recite one part one his daily to complete the recitation of the whole of the quran in every week so there are surahs you know if we leave aside surah al fatiha which is a preface to the whole of the quran three surahs al baqarah al imran al nisa they make first manzil or first hizb then five then seven then nine then 11 then 13 and then 65 surahs so these are very well known and they were you know known in the days of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in the days of the companions of the prophet radhiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in also but very lately some scholars have found and you know just their minds you know they were diverted toward this fact the fact already was there but nobody about it thought that this you know phenomenon that quran has some surahs which are makki then some which are madani then again which are makki then again madani then again makki and then again madani so on This way also Quran has seven groups of surahs 
Every group has one or more surahs in the beginning, and it ends with one or more surahs which are madani. In the beginning, makki, and then they end with madanis. So in the first group that we completed, the makki surah was only one, surah al-fatiha. Although it's one, it's very small, but it's very great in itself. Ummul kitab, the mother of the book, the root of the book, and this one surah, this is the Makki in this group. And then we have four very long, very big Madani Surahs. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah al maida Then we have a balanced group. Two Makki Surahs, two Madani Surahs. The first group was not balanced. Only one very small, at least as far as its size is concerned, it's very small. Seven ayat and that's all. One very small. Makki Surah and four very large, rather the largest Madani Surahs, comprising, you know, more than six parts of the Quran, six and a quarter. So, but the second group is very balanced. It contains two Surahs which are Makki, which we completed, you know, Surah Al-Anam and Surah Al-Araf, and then two Surahs which are Madani. The first of them is this Surah Al-Fal, which we are beginning today, and the second will be Surah Al-Tawbah. So this is the second group. Now, what is the main theme of this group? Taken as a whole, this group, the Makki Surahs were addressing the pagan Arabs of the Arabian Peninsula, basically. We find very seldom reference to the people of the book, to the Jews, to the Christians, basically. All the discourses are addressed to the pagans, the idolaters, who thought that they were following Ibrahim while actually they had distorted all the teachings of Ibrahim But they claim that they, they are following Ibrahim So Surah al discusses it and very clearly brings about, brings out, you know, what was the real teaching of Ibrahim. إِنِّي وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَتَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ So that was the teaching of Ibrahim, and that was the Millah of Ibrahim, that was the creed of Ibrahim. And you know then in the second surah you find, you know, the threat that has intensified. What happened to so many other nations which were there in this very part of the region of the world in which you are inhabiting now? You must remember what happened to the people of the Nuh. Our messenger came to him, they rejected, and then they were destroyed. What happened to Ad, the very great nation of the Arabian Peninsula? What happened to help them? We sent a messenger, Hud alayhi salatu was salam, they rejected, and they were also exterminated. And what happened to Samud? They were also a very big civilization of the Arabian Peninsula. You know them. What happened to them? We sent to them our messenger, Saleh, alayhi salatu was salam. They rejected. What happened? They were destroyed. In the same way, what happened to those two cities, great cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, to whom we sent Hadrat Ruth, alayhi salatu was salam. They rejected and they were destroyed, annihilated. No trace of the two cities is found. Both of the cities, you know, they just plunged in the Dead Sea. And I think that is why, you know, that sea is called Dead Sea. They were situated at the coast, at the coast of that Dead Sea. And they were just drowned in that. Then what happened to the Madian or Midian? You, you have seen, you know, what happened to Firon? Such a big emperor, you know, and his chieftains, they were drowned. So now this... And will come to you also if you reject our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that is the essence of the two Makki surahs included in this group. Now these two surahs, which are Madani, included in this group, very noteworthy is the point that the first of them, Surah Al-Anfal, it was revealed in the second year after Hijrah, just after Ghazwai Badr, Battle of Badr. The other one. Surah Al-Tawbah, this was revealed much later, only two sections, some ayat, they were revealed in the eighth year after Hijrah, but most of it was revealed in the ninth year after Hijrah, mostly, you know, in the 
middle of that year, Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan, Shawwal. And no, some a very important ayat, they were revealed in the end of the ninth year of Hijrah. So why have they been brought together with such a vast difference in the time of their revelation? The point is that in the first surah, we find the first installment of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming to Quraysh of Makkah. They were taken out from Makkah and 70 of them, mostly the chiefs of different clans and, and houses, they lay there dead in the plain of Badr. That was the first installment. You know the form of punishment that has been changing. What happened to people of Nuh? The whole nation destroyed. People of Hud, whole nation destroyed. People of Samud, whole nation destroyed. But what happened about Firaun? Not the whole nation. Firaun and his army, taken out from their palaces and taken out from their towns, drowned in the ocean. In the same way, the chiefs of Quraysh were taken out from Makkah and most of them, they laid their killed and slain in the plain of Badr. So that was the first installment, a very big punishment. Then you know the last punishment that came in the ninth year. The biggest humiliation when the command came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Faizan salak al ashurul hurum they will all be slain, they will all be killed, if they now, within four months, this is the only limit, this is the final ultimatum. If they don't accept Islam, they will all be eliminated and exterminated. So that was the biggest humiliation which came to these people who were very arrogant and very haughty. So both these surahs actually, they are depicting... The, the end of that great nation, Quraysh, and the two installments which came to them, the first and the final. So that is actually the common point which has joined together these two surahs and then added to those two surahs in which, you know, the final call to them was given to embrace Islam, to accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this is the main theme of these four surahs which, which comprise the second group of Makki Madhvi surahs. Now let us begin our study. Yes, Aluna Kanil al Fal. As I told you, this surah was revealed immediately after the Battle of Badr. And a very important issue arose about the spoils and the booty of that bat battle. Because you know the Quraysh were defeated badly. Seventy of them, they lay killed. And there were so many of them, about seventy, they were taken as captives. And such a very great amount of, you know, booty and spoils, they were captured by the Muslims. Now what about these spoils? How can we, they be divided? What is the rule about it? Because this, is, this was the first incident. So there was a question. Because in the Arabian custom, they used to say, whosoever has, you know, grabbed something, it belongs to him. Now, but what, were the, what, what, what would be the rule in Islam? Yes, Aluna Qadil al They are asking you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the spoils. What is nafil? Additional thing. We know, we pray first, obligatory. Nafil, which is additional. So what is anfal? Because in a battle, victory is the first thing, the real thing. And if you get something, if some booty, some spoils, that is additional. So that is why, this term has been used. Yes, Saluna Qadid al-Fal. Qulil al-Falu lillahi wa rasul. Tell them. All this booty and spoils, they all belong to Allah and His Messenger. First of all, you all wash your hands off. None of you has any right. Very categorical denial. So just leave it alone. Fattakullah. You must have fear of Allah and regard of Allah. Whatever Allah decides, you must accept it. And you must keep straight the relations between you. Don't start quarreling about these, you know, these worldly things, and the articles, you know, that you have got, and these spoils and booty. 
and you keep obeying Allah and His Messenger. In kuntum mu'mineen, if you are really mu'min. Now, the following two ayat are very important. Who is the real mu'min? In namal mu'minun al-lazina izazo kira Allahu wajilat kulubu. The real and true mu'min are those that when Allah subhanahu wa taala is mentioned or remembered. Their hearts tremble in fear. By Zatuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadatuhu imana. And when the revelations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are recited unto them, it adds to their conviction, adds to their iman, adds to the depth of their real conviction, real iman. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they put all their trust and faith in their Lord. Not in the arms or in the number or, you know, worldly things. But they think that everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can do everything without anything. And if even you have everything, no result will come out unless He, sallallahu wa ta'ala, He decides. Alladheena yuqeebu na salah. Another aspect. That was the inner side. The esoteric element of iman. That there is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered, their hearts tremble. And when they listen to the ayat of Quran and the revelations of their Lord, it adds to the depth of their iman and depth of their conviction. And what is the outer manifestation? يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَبِمَّا رَضَقْ لَهُمْ مِنْ فِقُونَ They establish prayer. And whatever we have provided them, they spend out of it. Spend out of it for the cause of deen, for the pleasure of Allah. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّا They are the true moments. Now this, حَقِيقِي مُؤْمِن A moment who is really a moment. This is a very important place of the Qur'an which is giving us the prerequisites. What are the prerequisites which you fulfill? Then you can be acknowledged as a true moment. But this is only half of it. We shall note. That in the end, another aspect of this true iman is given. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِهِ وَحَاجَرُوا And that is the second aspect. And you know, these three aspects will go to make the complete picture of a moment. The inner esoteric element and then outer exoteric. There are two. Salah and Psalm and you know, spending in the way of Allah. And other, Jihad and Qital فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ so these are the three dimensions, as we have the three dimensions of the space, the length and breadth and the height or the depth, three dimensional space. So that is the personality of Mu'min, three dimensions of the personality of a Mu'min. كَمَا أَخْرَجَكَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَيْتِكَ بِالْحَقْتِ وَإِنَّ فَرِيقَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَكَارِهُونَ كَمَا In the difference of opinion regarding spoils of war, in the same way there was a difference of opinion when, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your Lord, your Rabb, made you come out from your home, bil haqte, with a definite purpose. When you set out from Medina towards Badr, there was a definite purpose before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was that purpose? It will be described later on. Bil haqte. Wa inna fariqa min al-mu'minin al-kareehoon. A group of the believers didn't like it. They were disliking it. They didn't want to go to fight the army and to confront, you know, a big army as the things will come, you know, in the later ayah. يُجَادِلُونَكَ فِي الْحَقِّ بَعْدَ مَا تَبَيَّنَا They kept arguing with you. Even after مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَا كَأَنَّمَا يُسَاقُونَ إِلَى الْمَوْتِ وَهُمْ يَنْزُرُونَ Even after the matter was absolutely made clear. As if they were being driven to death and they were seeing it. There might have been a few people, you know, among them who were not ready to go to the war. There was a different opinion. The Prophet ﷺ, he gathered the Muslims and he told them, O oh Muslims, an army, a big army, is coming from Makkah, from the south. And there is a caravan 
coming from the north, Syria. The caravan has very little number of soldiers with it as guards. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised me that one of these will be yours. You will definitely get victory over one of these. Now tell me, we should go to the caravan or to the army? That was a very important question. Why? Every commander has to see as to what is the morale of the people, of his soldiers, of his men. So before setting out, you know, to confront the army of Quraysh, the Prophet also wanted to know what's the condition of the Muslims. So there were a few just like us, you know. They said, okay, let us go to the caravan. It will be an easy prey. Only a few men guarding it. Then we shall get lot of booty. And even, you know, we don't have arms. At least the arms of those 30 or 50 people we shall capture and then we shall be in a better position to confront the army. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had some other purpose. The purpose. He wanted to make it clear that Allah is with the Muslims. Although they are few in number. They are 313 only. And most of them are without arms. Only two horses. 70 camels, and they have to confront, you know, an army of 1,000 people, 300 horses, 700 camels. And all were, you know, they were armed to the teeth. So Allah wanted to make it a clear sign, a miracle, to make it clear to the whole people of the Arabian Peninsula that Allah is with them because they got their victory in these conditions. So Allah has that purpose. And that could only be served if these momin, you know, if these believers, they confronted the army in this condition. So, but such people, you know, who were not, who were not very eager to go towards the army. They wanted to go towards the caravan. So they were as, they, they were going because the decision had been made now collectively. So they had to go. But they were going as if they were being driven to death. And they were seeing the death with their eyes. Maybe a few munafiqeen might have been there. And just recall, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was promising with you that one of the two parties will be yours. One army coming from the south, the other caravan. And you were, you wanted wishing that other than the armed one should be yours. Confrontation with me should be with the caravan. We should go and you know, have it. This is the purpose. And Allah had decided. To prove that the truth is the truth. And Allah wanted to cut the roots of these kuffar, these unbelievers, you know. The number 70 of them killed, including Abu Jahl, the most haughty, most proud, most arrogant person of Bakka, and so many others of his type. They were all killed in the Battle of Badr. Again, the same thing more explained. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proves the truth to be the truth. And proves the falsehood to be falsehood. Balau karihal mujribun. Although these people, these criminals might not like it. Istastagheesuna rabbakum. Just recall when you were calling for the help, praying to Allah for help. Fastajaba lakum. He responded to you, to your call. You know, the Prophet sallallahu one night before the Battle of Badr, he made a very long dua, very long prayer, a very long sajda, very long prostration. And you know, he even said these words, Oh Allah, if these people, these 313, they are killed tomorrow, then there will be none on the surface of the earth remembering you and taking your name. Why? Because I am your last messenger, last prophet. 
and this is the result of my 15 years hardest work. After 15 years hardest work, I have gathered them. And they are here now. They are killed. And then you because, you know, when he was prostrating in a small cottage of grass, etc., which was erected in between the two armies, and he was prostrating over there, and Abu Bakr ta'ala was standing as a guard when the Prophet quoted these words, he said, Now that's all. Don't, be, don't go beyond this, O Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then the Prophet raised his head with the good tidings of victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised me the victory. اِسْتَسْتَغِيسُونَ رَبَّكُمْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ أَنِّي مُمِدُّكُمْ بِأَلْفٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُرْدِفِينَ When you were praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, calling upon Him for help, and He responded that I am going to help you with 1,000 angels coming one after the other. وَمَا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بُسْرَى And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it as a glad tidings for you. وَلَتَقْمَيْنَ بِهِ قُلُوبُكُمْ So that your hearts remain at rest. وَمَنْ نَصْرُوا إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ And there can be no help except from Allah. What does it mean? Even the angels, if they were asked to be sent, they were to be sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah said, I don't even need to send the angels. I can do anything on my own without anything. But I... I gave you this figure of ten, of one thousand angels, so that you feel satisfied that if we have to confront an army of one thousand people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending for our help one thousand angels. That was only for your satisfaction that we decided this way. We could do it without sending the angels, but we decided in favor of sending angels and telling you that one thousand angels will be there on your back to help you, so that your hearts are at rest. وَمَا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بُشْرَى وَلَتَطْمَئِنَّ بِهِ قُلُوبُكُمْ وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مَنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيدٌ حَكِيمٌ Very lee Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-aziz, all-powerful. And al-hakim. And he is also all-wise. إِذْ يُغَشِيكُمُ النُّعَاسَ أَمَنَةً مِّنْهُ When he caused this slumber overtake you, now this is a very important sign. The night before Badr, before the battle, the Muslims, you know, they slept very calmly. It was from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Had they been harboring fears, what will happen tomorrow? You know, they would not sleep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, you know, satisfaction and calmness to their hearts. So that they slept very well. When they slept very well, they were first in the morning. That is one of, you know, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which came to the Muslims. If you are shikumun nas amanatan minhu, wa yunazzilu alaykum minas samai ma. And second blessing which came, rain came down. This third was the second blessing. Li yutahirakum bihi wa yuzhiba'alkum rizah shaitan. So that he purifies you with it. You can make ablutions. You can, if there is a need, you can take the bath. They gather the water of rain, you know, in the form of a pond. But Yusuf Ankum reaches the shaitan. So that he takes away from you the abhorrent things that which are from shaitan. Somebody might have become, you know, for him it might have become necessary to have a bath. But how could they take a bath if there was no, uh, no water? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided you the water. And so that he strengthens your hearts. Why you submit a bihil akdam? And then your feet must be firm. Now, because you know, the sandy, you know, the, the, this, this soil, now the sand settled, so that you they forced, you know, they were also, their feet was firm. Is you hear of Bukhayd al Malaika? Just recall when your Lord was inspiring and saying to the angels, He was sending the angels, 1000 angels go and help the Muslims. But what was the command that he gave? Annimatum, I am with you. 
Just listen. Even angels couldn't do anything if Allah was not with them. So actually the all authority is with Allah. All power is with Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Nobody has anything in his control or command. Even the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the angels, Inni ma'akum. You go to help my believers and I'm with you. فَصَبِّتُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Now make firm those who believe. سَأُلْقِي فِي قُلُوبُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُ الرَّعْبُ I will put and cast terror in the minds of those people, in the hearts of those people who don't believe, who have rejected the faith. فَغْرِبُوا فَوْقَ الْعَنَاقِ So smite and strike over their necks. فَغْرِبُوا مِنْهُمْ كُلَّ بَنَانِ and strike and smite every fingertip of them. This is because they opposed Allah. They became enemies of Allah and His Messenger. And whosoever becomes hostile to Allah and His Messenger, then Allah is very swift in giving punishment. He is very severe. And giving punishment. Shadidul Iqab. Zalikum fazuku. Wanna lil kafirin azab an nar. This is for you. Taste it. Now this is addressing the kuffar. The people of Makkah. This is the first installment which we have given you. Seventy of your people. Mostly the chiefs. They have been killed. Zalikum fazuku. Now taste this. One al kafirin azab al nar, and this is only the beginning. Actually, for the unbelievers who have rejected the faith, the real punishment is that of fire of hell. Ya yuhal ladina manu ya laqib tu bul ladina kafaru zahfan. Oh, you who believe, when you meet those who have rejected the faith, rejected the iman, in a battlefield, falatu waluhum al adbar. Don't show them and don't turn your backs to them. You must be face to face with them, fight them with courage to your last. Not to run away, not to show your backs to them. And whosoever turns his back towards them, except two things. Number one, if there is some strategy, some strategic move, and due to this strategic orderly retreat, you are going back. But even then, you know, the backs are not turned, you know, going back. And number two, or you have to go to meet another group of your own, another contingent of the Muslim army. So one may have to take them back so that both are joined together. These are the two only exceptions in which a mu'min is allowed to retreat from the battlefield as a strategy or when you have to go and meet and join with other contingent of the Muslim army. And whosoever, except in those, these two conditions, whosoever turns his back, So he has incurred the wrath of Allah. And his abode will be hell. And that's a very bad destination. Falam taqtuluhum. Very important ayah. O Muslims, it was not you who killed them. You couldn't kill these 70 people. Armed to their teeth. Mounted. So many, you know, more than you in number. Falam taqtuluhum. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ قَتَلَهُ It's actually Allah who has killed them. وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَبَاهُ And O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you threw a handful of dust towards the army of the enemy, actually you didn't throw it, and Allah threw it. Why? What does it mean? Don't misinterpret this ayah. What does it mean? Nothing can happen without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have killed the enemy 
had the Muslim not come in the field and confronted the enemy. First, the Muslim, the Mu'min has to do whatever he can do. But he should never think that you know, his own power or his own means, they will be decisive. It's Allah who decides it. So actually, they were the Muslims there. They were fighting. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped them. And now he's saying, only your own power, your own strength, could not give you this, this victory. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the same way when say, we say that Allah is Raziq. But we are working hard, doing so many things. If we sit, you know, hands folded, then Allah is not going to send us, send us any provision or any risk. But whatever we earn, we say it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the fuzzle of Allah. That is why, you know, the earning, this worldly earning. Quran has only used this word kasb, only one place. Otherwise it is fuzzle. فَإِذَا قُلِيَتْ سَلَاتُ فَالْتَشَرُوا فِي الْأَرْضُ وَبْتَهُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ When the Friday prayer is over, you can go about in the, on the earth and you try to, to search for the fuzzle of Allah. Whatever you get, although you might have worked, you have worked hard for an hour and you got ten dollars, but you don't think this is your earning. These ten dollars are fuzzle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the, actually, the way a mu'min must think. So that is in the same way. We work hard to earn our livelihood. But whatever we get, it's from Allah. Our razik. In the same way, you strive to your utmost in the way of Allah. And you are there on the battlefield. You don't spare anything. You don't leave any stone unturned. Do whatever you can do. But when you are confronting the enemy, think that actually only the victory or the result rests in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and none else. فَلَمْ تَقْتُلُوهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ قَتَلَهُمْ وَمَا رَمَيْتَ اَجْرَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَا وَلَيُبْلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْهُ بَلَاءً حَسَنًا And this was so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to put the believers to a fine test so as to bring forth the good in, in them. Please note here, those who have some understanding of the Arabic language, Bala Yablu, in Salasi Mujarrad, it means simple testing. Bala Yablu. And Abla Yubli Iblaan, this is Babu Ifal. This means, you know, to put someone to a test so that the good in him comes out and it becomes apparent. Bala Abla, this is from Abla, Le Yubli Al Mu'minin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you to this test so that you know the good in you becomes apparent, comes out. People can see, see them with their own eyes. What is hidden in, in you? In Allah Samir Alim, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing, all knowing. Zalikum, this is, this has happened. This victory is yours, O Muslims. This defeat is yours, O the unbelievers of Mecca. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to weaken all the strategies, all the devisings, all the plans of these unbelievers. So to be, be at rest, O oh Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of them after, afterwards also. In tastaftihu Now this is directed towards the kuffar of Makkah. In tastaftihu faqad jaakumul fat. If you wanted a decision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the decision has come. Actually what happened, because Abu Jahl was absolutely confident his victory. One thousand strong army, wholly prepared, with full provisions. And you know, in, that day, in those days in Arabia, this was a very unusual phenomenon. People of Quraysh, very brave, their bravery was acknowledged throughout the Arabian Peninsula, 1,000 of them marching towards Medina. And you know, the intelligence reports must have been there, that the Muslims are not more than 300, and they lack the arms, and they have nothing with them, nearly armless. So he was so sure of victory, that we shall just you know, finish them, that he said, this is going to be Yawmul Furqan. And Furqan means criterion. 
which discriminates between what is false, what is real, what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong. So he himself said, this is going to be Yawmul Furqan. Now this day, you know, will prove who is on the right path. Because they thought we are on the right path. At least they claim so. We are on the right path. This is the creed and religion of our forefathers which we are following. They are the people who have left, you know, the, the, the deen and creed of their forefathers. So they are at fault, not us. So this will prove, this day will be a criterion, day of criterion. This is going to be Yawmul Furqan. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Quraysh of Bakka, In tastaftihu faqad ja'akumul fatha. If you wanted a judgment and decision, you have got it. Now it's absolutely clear that Allah is with Muhammad and his companions. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. A'in tantahu fahuwa khairun lakum. Now if you stop, if you give up the opposition that you have been making to, Al to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is better for you. If you desist in future, it's better for you. وَإِن تَعُودُوا نَعُدْ And if you again do the same thing, we shall again do the same thing. The same result will come to you. We should also do the same thing. وَلَن تُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ فِيَاتُكُمْ شَيَّنْ وَلَوْ كَسُرَتْ And your host will avail you nothing, though it may be numerous. Your number might be more than 1,000 or 2,000. It will be of no avail to you. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Know it, be it known to you that Allah is on the side of the believers. He is on the back of the believers. He is with the believers. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَتِعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَوَلَّوْا عَنْهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَسْمَعُونَ Now these ayat, you know, they are, you know, general ayat. Whatever we have read, it had a special context, historical context. Now these are the general teachings of the Qur'an. And we must understand them fully. Because, and we must think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing us also. Not only the address was to the people 1400 years before who won this battle against Quraysh. No. For all moments of all times to come. Ya ayu ala dina amanu wa tiru allaha wa rasoolahu wa la tawallahu anhu wa antum tasma'ul. O you who believe, obey Allah and his messenger. Wa la tawallahu anhu. Don't turn away from him. Wa antum tasma'ul. If you are listening. When there is a call from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When there is a call from the deen of Allah then you must not turn your backs to it. La tawallahu an. You must respond positively. You must say labbaik. Wa la takunu ka alladhina qalu sami'na wa hum la yasma'oon. Don't be like those who said we have heard and they were not hearing. Now you know reference to the munafiteen of Madinah who profess to believe and they said, okay, we have, we have heard. Actually, they have not heard. Only their ears have heard what the Prophet said. Their hearts couldn't hear what the Prophet said. There was a dichotomy, a distinction. There, you know, these ears and these eyes, they were okay. But the sight and the hearing of the heart and the soul was knocked out. وَلَا تَكُنُوا كَالَّذِينَ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ إِنَّ الشَّرَّ الدَّوَابِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ سُمُّ الْبُقْمُ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Verily, the worst of the beasts and animals of this world are those people, those human beings, who are deaf and dumb and who don't use their intellect. Although they are seeing, like the seeing of animals. We read the ayah, you know, last night. لَقَذْرَانَ عَلَى جَهَنَّمَا كَسِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آيُنٌ لَا يُفْسِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا أُولَائِكَ كَلَنَامِ وَلُمَ ضَلْ The same thing repeated here. إِنَّ شَرَّ الدَّوَابِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ السُّمُّ الْبُقْمُ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْقِلُون and had he made them 
hear what the Prophet was saying, they would have turned their backs in aversion. Now this was the picture of the munafiqeen. And this disease, you know, had started in the community of the Muslims at Medina. Although they were very few still in number. But you know, the disease had started. It was in its first stage, as I told you. This nifaq is a disease. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَذَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا And this disease was progressing. We have read Surah An-Nisa. Surah An-Nisa was revealed in the sixth year after Hijrah. And that disease, you know, had developed and reached its third stage even. But still it was, you know, in the early stages. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سَجِيبُوا لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ Very beautiful words. Oh, you who believe, respond positively to the call of Allah and His Messenger. إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ When they call you, لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ To that which will give you life. You feel if we go to the battlefield, maybe we are killed. Whosoever goes to the battlefield, he risks his life. There is every likelihood that he might be killed. Because when you are going to the battlefield, the, the, the possibility is there. But what is this killing? If you are killed in the way of Allah, you get the real life. Now these two ayat, we are already dead in Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran. Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed before this Surah Al-Anfal. Because Surah Al-Baqarah was, was revealed beginning from just after Hijrah till the Battle of Badr. That was the period in which, you know, most of the ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah were revealed. So that ayat was there before the Muslims. So actually this is not that. This is the real life. In the same way, if there is some Islamic dawa, real Islamic call, real Islamic movement, they want you, they call upon you, spend your time, your time, spend your money, devote your life to this cause and for this purpose. So actually, this is not going, giving you any loss. All the benefits will come to you and you will have the spiritual life. You will not be living now as an animal. You will be living now as real human beings. This spiritual life will come to you if you respond positively to the calls of Allah and His Messenger. Ya and be it known to you, very important, that Allah comes in between a person and his heart. What does it mean? A call came to you, you rejected it. Then again there was a call, you again rejected it. What will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will withdraw from you the capacity of hearing and responding positively. This law, the culmination of this process is خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَارِهِمْ بِشَابَةٍ Now the seals are put on the hearts and the hearing. Why? Because you didn't كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٍ We read it in Surah Al-Anam. You know, if... Something comes to you and your heart testifies it is correct, it is right, it is the truth. You must accept it. Don't delay it. If you delay it, the capacity of acknowledging and comprehending the truth will become less. Second time again, your heart says, okay, this is correct. Respond to it. And you are not still responding. Oh, there might be some loss of property or life. Oh, I might lose my position which I am occupying at this time. I am the leader of my community. How can I accept this? So then that capacity of acknowledging and comprehending the truth becomes worthless. And this process continues till such time that a man reaches the point of no return. Now he cannot come back. If he has reached to that level, then Allah says, خَتَمَ اللَّهُ وَلَا قُلُوبِهِمْ وَلَا سَمْهِمْ وَلَا أَفْسَارِهِمْ وَشَعْبَةٍ 
and that is which has which is being referred here in anna allah yahulu bayna al mar'i wa qalbihi so beware lest this position and this condition should also be for you wa annahu ilayhi tuhsharun and that in the end you will have to be gathered towards him everybody has to go to him wa taqu fitnatan la tusibanna allazina zalamu minkum khassa and you must fear the infliction that will not involve only the evil doers if a community is doing something wrong although you are not committing that mistake yourself but you are also not forbidding them then when the punishment of allah comes you will also be punished we have read it in surah al-araf fanjain allazina yanhaun anis su only those were saved from those people who broke the law of sabbath only those who were forbidding them from doing it those you know who although they were not committing that sin themselves they were not forbidding others from doing it they were also involved because it is abetment if you are not stopping them you are with them you will be included in the punishment so this is very important don't think because i am not doing anything well you will not be spared only if you have done your best whatever you could do to stop people doing it you had spent all your energy all your time whatever was possible for you to change the direction of the events then you know allah subhanahu wa taala will spare you otherwise you will be included in the people when the punishment comes but taqu fitnatan la tusiban alladhina zalamu minkum khassa wa'lamu anna allah shadid al-iqab and know it thoroughly fully well be it known to you that allah subhanahu wa taala is very severe in punishment waskuru iz antum qalilul mustadafuna fil ard and just remember when you were a few in number and you were oppressed in the land now this refers to the muhajirin from makkah at makkah you were oppressed overpowered by the mushrikeen waskuru iz antum qalilul mustadafuna fil ard takhafuna yatakhattafukum an-nas and you feared that people will snatch you fawakum allah gave you refuge wa'idakum bi nasrihi and he strengthened you with his help wa razaqakum min at-tayyibat and he provided you with good things la'allakum tashkurun so that you become grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this ayah is 100% applicable to the muslims of pakistan about half a century back they were fearful of the hindu domination what will happen if the britishers go we will be in a minority we will be at the mercy of the hindus they will exploit us they will you know finish our identity they will just absorb us in their own culture we will be lost so we pray to allah subhanahu wa taala o oh allah save us from the slavery of the hindus give us pakistan a land of our own where have the where we have the authority in, and you know the decision maker making in our own hands and we shall establish your deen we shall establish deen of allah this was the promise that we made we feared the hindu majority allah subhanahu wa taala gave us pakistan miraculously no doubt miraculously but you know what we have done is just to the contrary we were not grateful to allah we didn't fulfill our promise to allah subhanahu wa taala that is why a very big installment of allah's punishment came to us in 1971 and maybe the second one is going to come soon 25 years had passed allah gave us a respite of 25 years and because we didn't proceed didn't advance in the way of allah towards the deen of allah the punishment came another 25 years will be completed on the 27th of ramadan this year full 50 years will be completed 
of the existence of Pakistan. So I am fearing much what will happen. Waskuru is antum kalilun mustadafuna fil lard. Every one who belongs to Pakistan must read this ayah with this special context in his mind. Waskuru is antum kalilun mustadafuna fil lard. Takhafuna iya takhtafakum nas faawakum wa yadakum bin aslihi wa razatakum bin atayibat ilal lakum tashpurud. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تخونوا الله والرسول وأخذوا أماناتكم وأنتم تعلمون. Oh, you believe, betray not Allah and His Messenger, and betray not the trust among you also. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّمَا أَمْبَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ and be it known to you, be it clear to you that your belongings, your wealth, and your children. They are but a trial for you. Allah has given you this thing to see what you do with it. Allah has given you sons and daughters to see how you bring them up. You are bringing up them, bringing them up as Muslims, teaching them Islam, or you are only thinking about their worldly futures and careers, spending huge sums for education. What education? The only education to have a good career. To have a better living, nothing else. Coming over all the way from Pakistan to America to have some degree, so that this degree can be cashed. That's all. No teaching of Deen. This is what we are doing. So we are failing in this test. Walamu an namam walukum wauladukum fitna. We have given you wealth. What are you doing it? Luxuries, comforts. To show off your wealth, this is how you are using it. So you have failed in the test. This wealth should have been spent for the deen of Allah, for the cause of Allah, to propagate the message of Allah, to establish the deen of Allah. So this is failing us. If this is the real condition, walamu anna maamwalku wa aladku fitna, wa anna Allah indahu ajrul azzi. And it is only Allah with whom is the great reward. What reward will you get from your own sons or daughters? You invested yourselves in them. What reward can they give you? Maybe they become arrogant. No, no, father, I am not going to listen to you. You belong to the past generation. You have your own standards. Now the things have changed. The world is different. So please let me alone, and then you know you'll be rubbing your hands in sorrow. I invested myself wholly and solely in this, in this son of mine, and now which way is he going? I have no control. So you can't get a reward, but every minute spent for the cause of Allah, every penny for the spent for the cause of Allah, that will be rewarded. Allah has the best reward. Walamu an namam walukum wa uladukum fitna wa an Allah indahu ajrul azim. Barak Allahu li wa lakum fi al-Quran al-Azim wa nafani wa yakum bil ayat masdik al-Hakim. Allahu akbar. The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, 
and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at T-A-N-Z-E-E-M dot U-S or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.